pleasant day everyone! Welcome to Horticulture Module for Grade 10. This focuses on Quarter 2, Week 3, Discussion. So let's get started! For this week, we will going to discuss Pre-Cultural Preparation Practices. After knowing all the pre-planting operations, we also need to know about pre-cultural preparations or practices. These two are both useful in the different land areas and they are aiming for a bountiful harvest. At the end of the lesson, students must be able to first recognize the different pre-cultural practices. Second, observe how pre-cultural practices should be done and apply the different practices in the real-life situation. In this module, we will going to discuss five pre-cultural practices. So let's start with Farmers conduct a market survey. Do you undertake market survey to determine the crop to cultivate? Most smallholder farmers are not in touch with the present reality about the market. Therefore, they tend to struggle selling what they have produced rather than producing what they can sell. Market surveys provide useful information in guiding a producer or the farmer in producing what he or she can sell. The conduction of market survey recognizes market survey as the first fundamental practice that smallholder farmers must undertake regularly in order to realize economic returns from the farm. These are the informations that a farmer should obtain from the market surveys he or she conducted. First, during which month there is peak demand for the crop? Farmers need to know this information in order to generate higher income. Do not produce a crop that is not in demand for the month to avoid wastage of your produced or harvest. Second, the price of the crop during the peak demand. The price of the crop during the peak demand will be your reference how much are you going to sell and how much profit or markup should be applied. Another is the crop variety that has the highest demand. Example of this is the Gimaras mango, which they said is the most sweetest and delicious variety that buyers demand for. Next, supply requirements like quantities and frequency. It means how much produce you are going to sell in the market. Say for example, the market demand is 100 kilos of banana with twice a week of supply. For quality of market requirements, the crop produce should qualify to the market standard. The source of current supply. Farmers should identify who is the dominating supplier in the market to be able to determine competitors. Potential buyers and terms and modes of payment. Crops are produced should be attractive and quality enough for customers to build patronage and come up to the constant payment agreement. Last, marketing strategies traders' willingness to buy from them. Farmers should strategize marketing promotion in order to get the willingness of buyer to trade from them. Number two, pre-cultural practices is crop planting calendar. Do you use crop planting calendar to plan production for the next cropping season? A crop planting calendar is a tool for a farmer to plan for production to ensure that marketing coincides with the period of the year when the marketing price of the produce is highest. 
These are the procedures in order to use crop planting calendar. First, determine from the market survey results when there is peak demand for selected crops. Work backward from the month when there is peak demand to prepare monthly farm activities preceding the peak period. Use the monthly activities preceding the peak as a procurement plan for farm inputs and a guide for farm operations. Third pre-cultural practices is a collecting soil sample. Do you undertake soil testing at least once in two to three years? It is recommended to have the soil analyzed for nutrient availability and other factors vital to crop production after every two to three years. The results of the soil analysis should be used to determine fertilizer and manure requirement. Fourth is manure preparation through composting. Do you use recommended composting practices by using different organic materials to supply major nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium? Due to significant role of manure in increasing crop productivity, farmers need to adopt more efficient methods of preparing the manure. Do you know that you can create your own compost at the comforts of your home? Yes! Please watch this video. Credits to the owner! Hindi kailangan ng malawak na bakuran o garden upang makagawa ng sariling compost. Pwedeng-pwede itong gawin kahit sa 5 gallons na container o kahit sa mas maliit na pasulang. Ang composting ay isang magandang paraan upang makapag-produce tayo ng sarili nating organic fertilizer na siyang makakatulong upang maging mas malusog ang ating mga tanim. At ang pinakamaganda pa dito ay libre ang mga materyales na gagamitin. Libre na nga, makakatulong pa tayong mabawasan ang mga basura. Ang compost o tinatawag na black gold ay siksik sa nutrients dahil galing ito sa mga nabubulok na organic matter tulad ng mga pinagbalatan ng mga gulay at prutas o kitchen waste. Mga tuyong dahon, grass clippings, papel at mga karton. Maraming paraan ang composting, pero ang ipapakita ko sa inyo ngayon ay ang madali at tipid na paraan. Sinimulan ko to 5 weeks ago at ito na siya ngayon. Although hindi pa nabubulok lahat ay pwede na itong gamitin. Ipapakita ko ito sa inyo kung paano ko ito ginawa. Ang unang kailangan ay ang compost bin. Ang ginagamit ko ay itong maliit na laundry basket na binutasan ko sa ilalim. Pwede rin gumamit ng paso na ganito o kahit na anong available sa inyo. Ito ang ginagamit ko dahil may mga butas ito sa gilid. Isa sa pinakaimportanteng kailangan upang mabulok ng mabilis ang mga organic matter ay dapat may pinapasukan at nilalabasan ng hangin o yung tinatawag na aeration. Kapag balde kasi ang ginamit ko ay kailangan ko pang butasan ang mga gilid samantalang ito nakaredy na. Isa pang dahilan ay dahil sa malaki ang bunga nga nito. Kapag ganito ay mas madali kong mahahalo ay mga binubulok ko. Pangalawang kailangan ay ang mga compost materials. Ang magandang compost ay dapat nagtataglay ng nitrogen at carbon. Ang mga brown materials o mga tuyong dahon at mga papel o karton ang source ng carbon. Ang carbon ay nagbibigay ng energy sa mga microorganism na nagbe-breakdown sa compost. Ang mga kitchen waste o food scraps naman, tulad ng mga balat na saging, pinagbalatan ng gulay, pati na ang mga grass clippings at mga pinagputulang mga sariwang sanga ang source ng nitrogen. Kapag magkocompost tayo sa maliit na container, ay dapat hiwain o gupitin ng maliliit ang mga compost materials para mabulok ito na mas mabilis. Yung iba ay ginagamitan nito ng blender o food processor. Pagpatong-patongin ito sa container, ang ratio ay dapat mas marami ang browns. 2 part ng browns at 1 part ng greens. Inuuna ko ang mga papel para kapag pinatong ko ang mga greens ay mas madali itong mabulok.
pagkatapos ay masain ito sa imbabaw. Ang dalawang pinakakailangan para madaling mabulok ang mga compost materials ay air at water. Kaya dapat ay lagi itong basa pero hindi naman overwatered. I-check ng araw-araw para sure na hindi natutuyuan. Haluin din pala ito ng at least dalawang beses sa isang linggo. Kapag natapos na ay takpan ng plastic at ipwesto kung saan na iinitan. Dahil ang init na nanggagaling sa araw ay makakatulong magpabilis ng proses ng composting. Kung kayo ay nakatira sa maliit na apartment at nasa balcony ang garden, ay huwag mag-alala na mabaho ang ganitong composting. Hindi ito mabaho, amoy lupa lang siya. After 4 to 6 weeks ay may compost ka na magagamit. Minsan ay ginagawa ko itong pang topping sa mga tanim ko. Fifth precultural practices is the quality seed or planting materials. Do you use recommended quality planting materials with one or more of the following characteristics? like disease resistance and tolerance, high yielding, early maturing, better taste, size, and longer shelf life? The use of quality seeds or planting materials can positively improve the returns of smallholder farmers for high yields, higher income, and less expenditure on control of pests and diseases. You are now ready to answer the learning task 1 on page 21 of your self-learning module. Enumerate the pre-cultural practices and write your insights about each. Limit your insights to 10 sentences each pre-cultural practice. For the assimilation on page 21 of your self-learning module, Learning Task 2. Among all precultural practices, choose only three and apply it in your land area near your house. Make a narrative report about what you have done and then make sure to take pictures for your documentation. Place your output in a long bond paper. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day! I hope you learned something from this video. For more videos and updates, don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. God bless everyone!